Soweto is a big township. It is a thriving economy. You will see along the streets, it is businesses. Those businesses are generating cash and they want connectivity. I have always had this obsession of owning a business. Telecom allowed me to have a dealership with them. One is in Atridgeville, this is Pretoria, the other one is in Soweto. These are customers who've got disposable cash to spend. They don't wanna go into contracts, they don't wanna own anybody, but they want connectivity. So they buy routers, they buy Wi-Fi devices, they connect their kids, and they buy them data, everything prepaid. Yeah, thank you. I'm a happy customer. <laughs> Future Makers is our telecom group enterprise and supplier development uh, function. We have various programs that support growing the culture of innovation within the telecom group. Consumer dealers and the consumer dealer program is very important because these businesses are based where our customers are based. They understand the needs of our customers and they enable us to create better products and better experiences. With the help of Future Makers, we invested in a technology for us inside our stores to send telecom data to a router on a tablet. 2021, it was in July, then we got looted. So this whole shop was vandalized. Again, Future Makers came to say, we know you've been hit, we know you want your store back up, we are here, and they supported us. One of the biggest challenges that small businesses face is access to capital. So with the supplier development programs, when a supplier has an opportunity to play an important role, especially in a space which is very capital intensive, we tailor programs to support businesses depending on what their needs are. Goldstream Energy is a fuel wholesaler with a primary focus of supplying the bulk fuel requirements to the South African market. Our mini bulk delivery service, which we call Power On, was started in 2020. With the ever increasing demand in backup power or backup generation, it was primarily focused at delivering much smaller quantities of diesel to a vast range of customers. I grew up in a family um, of entrepreneurs and I actually tried to open my own fuel wholesale business, which has not been successful. It's quite a lot of red tape to get licensing. So the petroleum industry is probably one of the most regulated industries in the country. So with our mini bulk offering, we saw a gap to empower SMEs in that the cost of entry was quite low and they were able to piggyback on the knowledge and know-how that Gulfstream has. We bring in SMEs and give them the systems, the resources, uh, assets such as the trailers to be able to deliver fuel on our behalf to a range of customers across the country. I've been with Gulfstream for the last two months and I've literally seen myself grow in leaps and bounds. I have two trailers and two buckies and we've also got two drivers at the moment. Talcom has a number of generators at their sites across the country to sustain their network during load shedding and during power failures. With our capability in our mini bulk delivery service, we're able to supply diesel to these sites across the country. From having orders on irregular days to having orders almost on the hour and ensuring that they, those orders get delivered and properly scheduled, making sure that the drivers know exactly what route to take, which when they're going to deliver to which clients, and to be here finally in the last two months for me, it's been a lifelong dream. I still need to wake up <laughs> and, and remember that, hey, this is where you've wanted to be and just enjoy the ride. We've seen that this model works extremely well in that it creates employment. It allows these SMEs to have a sustainable business model, which they can grow and build on to one day becoming a formidable force in the transport and petroleum industry. SMEs and startups have essentially been critical in innovating value-added services and understand the evolving needs of customers. And we've seen them as key partners, especially in sectors such as gaming and providing good quality innovative products for our customer.
22 and Sloan is a startup campus to basically help startups start, launch, and scale. There are a lot of entrepreneurs that require funding, that require capacity building. So we went to Telcom and shared the idea of hosting a hackathon aimed at bringing together techies and startups that actually haven't launched their product but still need that capacity. It was like a 48 hour build this platform now, so the pressure was on. You want to go to sleep, but you see other teams are working and you're like, no, 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 let me push myself. So it was really the best hackathon I've ever experienced. My name is Mamelo Mufuking and I am the CEO of Saturated. We are a sector agnostic digital agency and the product that we developed and won through the hackathon is called Spana. So Spana is a software tool that focuses on the skills development agencies, providing the learners with training to give them work experience. So my name is Brandon Tammy Jr. Nkabinde, and I am the founder and CEO of Block Labs. With our app, edu creators come and create fun, educational, engaging video content. The ed creators also get to create and publish their own quizzes pertaining to high school subject matters such as geography, science, life sciences, and maths. We want students to be able to get on the leaderboard and learn and use tokens and buy airtime, you know, get discounts on laptops because learning should be something that's rewarding. We saw the best three startups being onboarded in our accelerator program. Telcom does assist giving the SMEs funds over and above the cash prize winnings. And throughout the program, they do also offer mentors that are related to those startup businesses. Before, we would be very quick to just go to market with what we have. Now, we're taking things step by step. We're documenting more, we're testing more. We get that feedback. So we get to make mistakes earlier along the way, and that allows for us to better the product. So right now, we're at the end of our development stage. It's been a continuous reiteration of what we think people want and what we've heard they want and just so mashing it together and creating an app that is not essentially a white elephant. It's actually there to solve problems. The gaming industry in South Africa is growing exponentially. So Tsimulohong is a digital innovation hub. Telcom Future Makers, they've helped us build the infrastructure in our gaming hub, so equipment and resources that enable these SMMEs to produce the games, the computers, the software. I got given this hackathon opportunity, and this one had a cash prize, so I was really motivated to perform. It was great to win uh, because it felt like a quality panel was giving you recognition. And coming from varsity, not having worked a job yet, that was an affirmation. So Telcom came in and they helped fund for the equipment and a monthly stipend. And throughout those five months and beyond, we were developing a game called Fat Pack Joe. Uh, we're trying to make it as premium as we can, a mobile game to showcase how good we can perform with our skills. So the program uh, includes going to Africa Games Week, which is where you get to meet a lot of very important industry personnel in the game space. At the same time, you get better at pitching, right, because you're pitching all the time. So there's, there's a lot of networking and business growth and just engaging the market that you do by simply being placed at some long and inside the program. I think we see small businesses more as partners because they hold agility, they hold innovation. They create opportunities for employment within communities uh, that we serve 
as a group. And that is why our relationship with SMMEs is a long-term relationship um, that we keep with them as we walk the journey, not only of their growth, but the growth of, of South African economies. How the program helped us most, we've had the chance to make these mistakes and grow into you know, a business that is able to keep itself going. I'm very happy, especially with the support of Future Makers. We feel we belong, giving back, employing the kids of Soweto, training them to become entrepreneurs. It's only been two months, and in that two months, I have just seen so much opportunity and potential to grow. The future is just so bright. I think the Future Makers program is there to enable young innovators, and I've received a lot of support from them and the team. Being part of these programs has been highly beneficial and the one thing I've learned the most is that you will never stop learning. Driving trucks is Sometimes you can say it's an easy job because you just sit and drive. No, it's not. It's very, 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 very challenging. Because I also have to know how to operate uh, the machines on the tanker so that it can offload the right product. I feel good because the job that I'm doing, uh, it's not only for me, because without us, uh, the country can stand still. Mawanda Supply and Distribution started in 2009, transporting fuel depot to depot. We were such a small company at the time, doing ad hoc work with no contract, but trying to build our reputation and our presence in the market. Around about 2015, we had an opportunity of being appointed by BP on the Enterprise Supply and Development, which was quite a wow for us. We were to transport the jet fuel, delivering into Inshaka and Devon, was also the East London Airport. BPSA, we were able to capacitate them with interest free loan managed by the uh, National Employment Fund. There has been growth in the organization in terms of expanding their offering to BPSA, where they move from jet fuel to delivering to a retail network around the country. There's BP in 2021, uh, we transacted with about 660 suppliers, and we managed to ensure that 96% uh, of those suppliers are triple BEE compliant entities. With BP, there is no special treatment just because they're a developing company. We have to meet their standards. You have to get trained and then you still have to learn. And yeah, I feel like I've grown. I've grown a lot. If by for whatever reason there is a gap that they can identify, BP also support in terms of your annual audits uh, on your health, environment, safety and quality. Supply development uh, fit into our transformation agenda. It's about the impact and making sure those enterprises that never had an opportunity before they are actually given an opportunity, they are capacitated, and they are able to compete in the mainstream economy. BP has confidence on us and taking a calculated risk on us. It helps us to be confident to go and participate in other tenders with other stakeholders. I know to date that they have got 26 vehicles deployed in BPSA, but in total they actually have about 147 vehicles. Nona employs more than 300 employees. So that shows exponential growth. And therefore, these small entities, as they grow, they help with reducing unemployment. You know what makes me excited? It's the ripple effect that we have on the people that we're employing. I have been here for a long time. No, actually, she's a successful woman because she's very patient and she's like a family. When I see success stories like the one of Makwande, it gives the motivation to actually do more and replicate what we've done to support black women to succeed in the corporate sector. I would say to women out there, don't doubt yourself because you're limiting yourself. March on. When you march on, you can do it. BP has been in South Africa for almost a century and we plan to continue playing a role in shaping South Africa's energy future. Diversity, equity and inclusion 
are very important for us to actually thrive as a business. This therefore means that in our value chains where we operate, we have to make sure that we bring the previously disadvantaged communities along. Transformation of ownership patterns within our service stations is one of our core pillars within our transformation journey. And we've taken very bold targets where by 2025, 70% of our service stations should actually be owned by blacks within the South African society. I studied at BCom. My background is finance. I finance quite a few small businesses across South Africa. When I did my due diligence, I found that the service station was likely to be the most resilient. Fuel is something that we all need. We run on a franchisee franchisor business model and those agreements are based on a five-year agreement. And as BP, we made a decision that when those renewals come through, we give a chance to the deserving previously disadvantaged South Africans. They have to have some experience in handling budgets, which is quite key and critical because the margins are very, very thin. So I initially started on the 1st of October, 2021. It's essentially three businesses in one. The forecourt, the bakery and the shop, I invested my entire life savings into this business. When cash flow was exceptionally tight, the risk of losing it all was very terrifying. My lifeline was a consignment stock. And what that means is that instead of paying for fuel deliveries every two to three days, I'm only paying on what we sell. PP does have an independent service provider that provides support, mentoring these new operators because now we're transforming an individual to becoming an actual business person and we want them to be successful. Most of us didn't actually come from the industry. So I find that my mentor has been absolutely crucial in directing me. Transformation candidates are treated as normal as any other dealer. Every year we look into the performance where they get targets the only difference is just the additional support to make sure that they achieve the business goals. I have a buddy dealer who has been assigned to me. The benefit there is that this is now a person who's got a wealth of knowledge of how the systems work. The number of previously advantaged dealers or operators who've reached out and made themselves available to actually support the new and upcoming deal is, has shown me that in, in the core of each and every being, we all want the same for each other. So I'm really, very really grateful for BP. I think I have a lot more control of the business. I understand the system a little bit better. I feel like I, I know my customer. I'm enjoying meeting different people. We meet you know, kind people. We meet the rude people, but I, I can handle them. And I'm, I'm enjoying doing that. I have a big heart. Since uh, I started working with Ms. Mabona, there's an improvement. I can see some changes there. She took me to the uh, next level, so I'm um, just like a vice supervisor. What I like about Mabona, she's very calm, a good listener, so she's a good boss and can uh, motivate you. For me to be able to give her an opportunity and support her to be successful, I take it as a national duty. Uh, because it helps me make a difference. There's about 30 families that are relying on her. I live in Tembisa Ivory uh, Park 3. I'm living with my wife and my three kids. They are benefiting a lot if they never suffer. BP is a source of income in this house, so I'm satisfied there. One of BP's global priorities is to support education. We've invested close to 188 million rands with the Energy Mobility Education Trust. Their choice of beneficiaries talks exactly to our vision of inclusivity, to our vision of equity. I'm doing my third year in BCom Transport and Logistics Management at UJ. The kind of thinking that you need to have to solve business problems is the most interesting part. I like the creativity involved, so I think that is my passion. I grew up in the Eastern Cape in a small town. My parents were unemployed, so chances of me being able to go to university were very slim or none. Coming from a previously disadvantaged background has a thing of making you very 
shy because you don't feel like you fit in in spaces. But I was in a program from grade 10 to grade 12, which is called the Targeting Talent Program, which takes learners from previously disadvantaged backgrounds to the University of Witwatersrand, where we were just exposed to how a varsity life is. That was the best program ever. The kind of study material that was provided had really helped a lot. They focus uh, mainly on maths, English, and physical science. And then there were a bit of recreational activities to create networks. Our stance is to take a far more holistic wraparound approach to continuously provide a support structure around the student. My scholarship, Energy Mobility Education Trust, covers my tuition cash and food stipends. They provide mentors. They bought us laptops in our first year. They also cover accommodation, relieving our parents the pressure of the financial struggles of our varsity. These young people carry hope, and what that looks like is young people actively participating in the economy. The trust makes that possible. So as an implementing partner of BPSA, that also fulfills their transformation objective. You are starting to change the discourse and the environment by way of accessibility. The Trust has delivered very, very good results for BPSA, ensuring that we invest in the skills for the future. And most importantly, the greater percentage of beneficiaries is actually our girl child, which makes us very, very proud. The scholarship ensured that I'm able to do something that I'm passionate about. To study a BSc in biological science, I was also able to do my honours degree. I just developed a passion for uh, saving the environment, you know. I'm looking to open a consultancy where I'll be providing business solutions. That is my plan for next year. This is exactly what the objective of the Trust was, to fuel the dreams that these youngsters had back then and suddenly they see themselves living their dreams.